Hello, sixth grade parents. So we're gonna start curriculum night with the beast that is ELA, which covers reading, writing, spelling, and everyone's favorite, grammar. So let's start out with reading. Now during reading, we use our ReadyGen curriculum. And I really like ReadyGen because it follows all the Common Core and AZ standards. Now with ReadyGen, uh, we dive into different units. Right now we're on a narrative unit for our novel study, the Egypt game. Now throughout the year, we will be having different readings and they will always have come with their own book or they'll be in a collection called text collections. So each student will always have a copy of what we are reading. Um, in reading, we like to cover a few different topics. We cover reading comprehension for recall, and so a student can make sure that they can summarize what they're reading, they know what they're talking about. Um, the other thing we like to focus on is vocabulary. Now the vocabulary isn't just random words, it's vocabularies that, uh, vocabulary words that they'll find within their reading. That way they're using their context clues to help understand what words they may be coming across that they don't know exactly. Um, with that, we also focus on reading analysis a lot, which is uh, my favorite because we dive into the story and we become more interested readers. Um, some examples of that would be character inference inferences. So that's a great one because the students will understand what the character's thinking, what the character's feeling, and they may be able to make a prediction about what could occur later on in the book. Um, we also have, have how dialogue develops plot, how the author's tone affects the story, whether the author is feeling positive about a character or negative. Um, we also go into uh, analyzing word choice. What is the what kind of words are, is the author using to bring out the story? Um, we also analyze different effects from causes within a story. Um, definitely main and central idea for stories and how those key details support main and central idea. And we also compare and contrast a lot of text throughout the year. Um, another thing that we do during reading is our mini reading lessons, which you will see as uh, they come home. There are some context clues lessons. We do some figurative language, some figures of speech, and Mr. Buckman's favorite, Greek and Latin roots. With ReadyGen, it also, well, let me pause. This is my favorite part. Because ReadyGen, it does follow along with our writing unit as well. Um, what I mean by that is we are reading the Egypt game currently. And this is a mystery novel. Now, along with reading our mystery novel, when we transition to writing, the students are working on a narrative. And their narrative, more specifically, is a mystery short story. So while they're reading a mystery short story, they'll be writing their own as well. Um, and that will continue the rest of the year. For another example, we will start reading, after this unit, our ancient uh, Mesoamerican reading, so historical readings. In return, the students will start writing an informative essay which it could be about a historical event. Now, I will say, teachers are more than welcome to break away from ReadyGen for writing. However, they will be sure to include the AZ and Common Core standards. They will definitely hit an informative essay, an argumentative, persuasive essay, and they will absolutely hit a narrative, maybe two or three times per out, uh, throughout the year. Uh, along with writing, we also have spelling, and we use mega words. Now, as much as spelling a word correctly is important, what we really focus in uh, megawords is phonemic awareness and phonics. How does a word sound? Why does it make that sound? We dive into the consonants, to the vowels, vowel combinations, because there are a lot of letters mixed together that make multiple sounds. However, it's important to know which chunks uh, are pronounced certain ways. So that way, when we come across a word we don't know, Mega words is helping us out pronounce new words. So, I'm a big fan of that. Now, the most fun, easy grammar. And this is where we study and learn the set of structural rules governing the composition of clauses, phrases, and words in our natural language. Um, you will see this frequently. This will be in class. Mega words and grammar will be in class and taken home for assignments. Um, for Grammar, what the students will be working on for about the beginning of the first quarter is prepositional phrases. So be on the lookout for that. Well, that wraps up ELA, and I can't wait to answer any questions you may have at Curriculum Night. See you there.
Hello, sixth grade parents, and welcome to Benchmark's 2020-2021 Curriculum Night. While our format is a little different this year due to obvious circumstances, we thought a short subject matter video would help give some direct information and be useful to you prior to our Curriculum Night Zoom meeting. For those that don't know me, I'm Mr. Reinfelder, and tonight I'd like to give you a quick overview of what we are doing in math this year. The course material we study this year will cover both AZ and Common Core standards, as well as our benchmark standards for Singapore math, and it's designed to set our sixth graders up well for the transition into middle school. This year, we will be focusing our attention on working with whole numbers and rational numbers, such as fractions, decimals, percentages, and unit rate, extending the notion of integers to the system of rational numbers, which includes negative numbers, writing, interpreting, and using expressions and equations, developing understanding of statistical thinking, and later in the year we will also be focusing on geometry and pre-algebra, critical to student success in middle school. We will also be spending a significant amount of time on Alex, which is an acronym for Assessment and Learning in Knowledge Spaces. For those that haven't used Alex in the past, Alex is an adaptive online math program that uses artificial intelligence and open response questioning to identify precisely what each student knows and doesn't know. Text we will be using this year include dimensions from which we pull worksheets. These worksheets will cover many AZ and Common Core standards in mathematics. In addition, we will be working through both the Singapore Math Primary Mathematics 6A and 6B workbooks, which have already been sent home with your students. Both Dimensions and Singapore Math utilize visual models and manipulatives for use in practical applications. We're looking forward to a fantastic year with our sixth graders and very much appreciate the opportunity to help shape their education. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later tonight. Have a great evening. Hello Bobcat families, this is Mr. Buckman and I wanted to discuss um, our social studies objectives and just share some of the uh, curriculum, some of the books that your students will be seeing throughout the year. Um, first thing I want to talk about are our main objectives. These are kind of like uh, the standards that you would normally see for a state or for national common core standards, but they are uh, kind of written out with these students in mind um, for um, both 6A and 6B, okay? Our main objectives for social studies is to spark interest in the world. This is about the most important one for us, and we try to make sure that we always have lots of um, great destinations that we talk about. We talk about different countries and regions of the world and make sure that students know all the exciting information that is found in these other parts of the world. Um, to hopefully foster this curiosity that they will carry into adulthood, um, sparking interest in the world. Also, one of the major objectives of social studies will be to understand the various ways that people have organized economies and governments throughout history. And we'll go up to about the 19th century on this, okay? This is um, a lot to cover, but we're trying to prepare students to discuss democracy and the history of the United States in middle school, in seventh and eighth grade, okay? So we'll have to discuss things like monarchy, um, also oligarchies and things like that, different types of government and also different types of economies. Another major objective is to recognize major movements of people throughout history, migration patterns. And we try to incorporate this with um, geography lessons as well too. So we know, so students will know why are people moving from one part of the world to another? What are their reasoning? Or are they forced to do this kind of stuff sometimes? This is a very important one. Major movements of people throughout history. Lastly, we also want to make sure that we are building critical reasoning skills and finding bias inside of um, primary and secondary sources 
when we read about history, okay? This is a very important school that we hope um, that they build this year and bring into middle school and into adulthood, okay? Now that I've discussed the, the objectives, I want to just briefly talk about some of the books that your students will be seeing throughout the year. Our first social studies reader is actually crossing over to our science curriculum as well. It'll be World Deserts here, and this has a lot of geography components, talking about the tropics of Cancer and Cap Capricorn as well, and also shows us the different projection styles of maps, like Mercator and whatnot. Um, starting in the second semester, um, we will be discussing Ancient Greece and Rome. This is a lot of fun. Now, prior to this discussion, we will also have a lot of lessons on ancient civilizations and world religions as well. After we've covered Ancient Greece and Rome, we will also be discussing the Enlightenment, the French Revolution, and if we get time, we will also discuss Romanticism as well. Um, a very important component of this year's social studies lessons will be independence for Latin America. This will bring us into our major discussions about colonialism and um, also democracy as well. We also have two readers that have to do with early American history. We have the Industrial Revolution, Changes and Challenges. We also have the making of America, immigration, industrialization, and reform. These are our readers for social studies. Now, um, in a lot of cases, we do not assign all of these books, but they will be reading from these books, um, especially in the second semester. Thanks again. We can't wait for this year. Miss Mel here. I am here to talk to you about the sixth grade science curriculum. So the sixth grade science curriculum is aligned to both Arizona state standards as well as core knowledge standards. We like to use a variety of teaching methods such as videos and readings. We also like to use a project approach where students will create projects to showcase their learning. We will have them complete field guides, as well as incorporate some physical movement into activities whenever we can to help the lessons get a little bit more engaging for them. We also really like to make posters as well as artwork with the students to help bring out a more creative element to science, as well as tests and quizzes to help assess student learning. We have some really exciting units in store including one we're working on right now, which is plate tectonics. We will then be moving into weather and meteorology, as well as talking about natural disasters. We will go into energy and space. In February, we go into anatomy with body month, as well as ecosystems, just to name a few. To give you an idea of what one of these units might look like, I'm gonna take a little closer look at ecosystems. We'll start off the ecosystem unit by giving every student a field guide. The first activity in the field guide involves vocabulary and giving some background information so they can really understand the lessons we're going into. Then we walk through each type of ecosystem that we'll be covering and we will learn about them with videos, readings, and other activities where they will learn about the ecosystems and record what they're learning in their field guide. We also have a really fun activity, which is building a bioactive vivarium. So we started off by going through a slideshow, teaching them a little bit about bioactive vivariums. After we go through that slideshow, then we get to actually build one with the class. Last year we got to build one for two of the science lab's animals and they were white tree frogs. This vivarium mimicked their natural habitat with the ability to process waste with a cleanup crew as well as have live plants. We brought the unit to a close with a culminating project which is the ecosystems quadrorama where students built a four-sided diorama. Each side represented one of the types of ecosystems that we covered, as well as included writing, giving information about what this environment is like. We are all so excited to be teaching science this year, and we have a lot of really fun activities in store. Thank you. I am 
I'm Miss Snell and I am the sixth grade Flex teacher. Flex is the online learning option that is being offered by Benchmark School right now. I am the Flex teacher for the subjects of reading, writing, math, social studies, and science. I base my classes in Google Classroom. This is where students will find their activities, what they are going to be doing, and the information that they need to be successful in class. All assignments are provided for students in Google Classroom, as well as need to be turned in to Google Classroom. At this time, I am not accepting physical work in person. All assignments do need to be turned in online. Some of the things we do in Flex involve watching videos, reading, creating posters, taking quiz or test assessments, as well as written responses and more. We are following the same curriculum as all of the other sixth grade teachers. We are learning the same concepts and we are reading the same books. Some of the technology that we use in Flex involve Google Documents, Slides, Google Drawings, and online games just to name a few. We will likely be exploring some new technologies as the quarter continues. I am so excited to be the Flex teacher and I can't wait to see what this quarter holds. Thank you.